Hello, it is me again. I am Sarah Millica and this is episode... Did I finish my name? Sarah Millica. Sarah Millica. I am Sarah Millican. And this is episode 75 of How To Be Champion. Storytime. Spectacular. Ta-da. <laughs> uh, we are still in the Sometimes I Hate Myself chapter. <laughs> still hate myself, guys. Just for you. Some folk think famous people need to take the criticism. Probably, uh, to do. Probably not you, lovely lot, as you've bought my book and liked me already. Have you bought my book? I don't think you have. <laughs> but maybe a friend of yours who hates comedy or women or Geordies or glasses wearers or just me has asked you to borrow my book from you. You're surprised because you know they hate everyone who wears glasses, even Gok Wan and who could hate him. But you lend it nonetheless as maybe he's trying to change. That person may think that when you're famous anything goes. Your head is above the parapet and you have to take it. And to those people I say, abuse is abuse, regardless of the situation. If I had a doctor who was a perfectly good doctor, but I thought wasn't as attractive as I'd like him to be, or his tie didn't match his shirt, or the hair on his arms bothered me, I wouldn't tell him, because A, I'm a nice person, B, I don't notice shit like that, and C, it doesn't matter. A lot of my body image questions can be answered with, it doesn't matter, but I would like to like myself more. I was fascinated to hear Claudia Winkleman say recently during a standard issue event, you can listen to the podcast, that her mam never allowed mirrors in the house when Claudia was growing up. What a wonderful idea that you have to concentrate more on your personality as your face and body don't matter. I think we had a normal amount of mirrors growing up, though the last time I stayed with my parents they seemed to have more. I'd go as far as to say too many. I know that because I watched a fat woman have a shower. You think that's bad? My dad told me he watched an old man have a shit. I used to have what they call negative automatic thoughts. A mean thought would pop into my head very quickly and I'd disagree with it, which I suppose is a good sign. One example was when my fella and I went to a summer wedding and I took a selfie of us in our glad rags on the walk from the car as the sun was out and everything was green and beautiful. In bed that night, into my brain popped, well, no one said anything so I mustn't have looked horrific. By the way, it's really hard to write this chapter. Yeah, it's not great to read it either, early Sarah. My logical brain immediately retaliated with, of course you didn't look horrific, because what is horrific? An extra from the walking dead is horrific, and I know I definitely had all of my innards tucked into my knickers and hidden behind a maxi dress. I think you have to take your worth from yourself. If you don't look like people do on the telly, doesn't matter. If you have nothing in common with the women and men in magazines, doesn't matter. They're not the norm. Magazine women are put there to make us buy stuff. All it makes me want to do is buy food and fewer magazines. Fuck that. None. If you know that you're a good person, kind, hard work and interested and interesting, then go with that. Fuck what your hair looks like or your nails. The heels of... Oh, sorry. The heels of your feet are covered in such hard skin that they make a noise on wooden floors. Do I dash out and get hard skin melting shite from my from boots? No, I just think if shoes become scarce, I'll be fine. My husband once said that skin is nature's shoes. Sometimes I put slut red nail varnish on so I look like a sexy hobbit. A year or so ago, I took part in the Guilty Feminist podcast with my friend Deborah Francis White. I really like her and she's got a good brain on her, so I was happy to be a guest on her show. I recorded two episodes. One was about women's magazines. That was a piece of piss. I bought a few and was determined to cover them in skull and crossbone, <laughs> crossbones wrapping paper. I backed them like we did with exercise books at school. I forgot how satisfying it was, but getting hold of the wrapping paper was tricky. I looked in all the likely shops and searched online. Nothing. Then I walked past a toy shop in Bournemouth and stopped and spotted it in the doorway. I bought so many sheets the lady on the till said, this must be for a really very big pirate present. I just smiled because it was easier than telling her I was given women's magazines the cover and I thought they deserved. I listed what was in the magazines, how to make a, how to fake a facelift and other such bullshit and compared it to what was on the home page of my standard issue magazine which included abortion, Game of Thrones, a film review, kid tantrums, lady sheds, mental health and British Science Week because women are interested in everything. 
and that is the end of episode 75 i really hope you enjoyed it uh, we will crack on with more of this chapter tomorrow take care of yourselves and let me know what you're having for your tea please because i'm interested in always in what you eat always i'm interested uh i wait it's curry night for us tonight uh so we're having that tonight um you take care of yourselves wash your fucking hands stay in the house and if you go outside wear a mask lots of love and i shall see you tomorrow bye bye Hello, it's Sarah Milliken here. Please make sure you subscribe to my channel to stay up to date with all of my latest videos. Don't forget to like, pop a comment below and why not stick around to watch a few more. I'm sure those emails or those dishes can wait a bit longer.